This is the story of a global medical disaster, probably one you've never heard about because doctors don't want you to hear about it. It's the story of a pregnancy pill called DES, which doctors dished out in handfuls to expectant mothers over three decades, and which now is producing medical horrors, perhaps second only to thalidomide. Late in life, abnormalities in reproductive organs and cancers are showing up in the offspring of those who took the hormone. Tens of thousands of them were Australians. In the 1940s, 50s and 60s, if you were pregnant and you wanted the best for your baby, DES was the recommended vitamin. Marketed under a variety of names, it was mainly for women with a history of miscarriages. We're only just discovering that it was like a slow-acting thalidomide, causing deformities not apparent at birth, but later in adulthood. I had a radical hysterectomy. I had the um, cervical adenosis. I've had precancerous cells removed from my cervix and when I was in my early 20s and I've also had surgery to remove uh, ovarian cysts and uterine fibroids. And uh, infertility problems and then with uh, pregnancies uh, I had incompetent cervix. Uh, I've been robbed of my birthright I suppose as a woman. These Australian women all bear the scars of DES. It's given them cancers and robbed them of children. And it's given their mothers a terrible burden. Ultimately, I had one stillbirth whilst on stillbestrol. Massive doses of it right up through to eight months. The baby was born to eight months, stillborn. When you say massive doses, how much? Up to 27 tablets a day. 27, 27 tablets a day? Tab I used to count them out into an egg cup. DES was doled out to pregnant women right through the Western world. But as Patricia Cody will tell you, its legacy is greatest in America, where 5 million confirmed, possibly as many as 10 million women, took the drug. Some of the researchers in the 30s never dreamed it would be given out like that to, to people. And you believed all along that this was a wonderful thing? Oh yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And the result is Martha. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought, isn't, isn't science wonderful? Here's this wonderful baby, and you know, until uh, 1971. Once a student activist, Patricia Cody took DES during pregnancy, and in America, legislators have regretted it ever since. From her tiny office in Berkeley, she has waged a relentless campaign on behalf of what's called the DES Daughters. Daughters like her own, Martha. I had an ectopic pregnancy, a tubal pregnancy, and when I was uh, 23, and then a few years later, I had exploratory surgery, and it turned out I had endometriosis, um, and ultimately I had a hysterectomy because of that. Um, the doctor who operated on me came to see me the next day, and he was very brusque and he walked away before I could ask him anything. So I actually chased him out into the hallway, pulling my e IV stand behind me, and I said, I'm a DES daughter. And he said, what's that? It's not as if doctors have cause to be ignorant of DES and its terrible side effects. It was banned here in America back in 1971, when it was found to have caused a very aggressive vaginal cancer. And since then, it's been established to have resulted in all sorts of other abnormalities of women's reproductive organs. But instead of help and understanding from the doctors who prescribed it, what DES mothers and daughters have run up against is a medical establishment feverishly covering its tracks. You know, they feel bad about it and their way of dealing with it is denial. And, oh well, it's been overblown by the media, a lot of hysterical women, it only happens to young women. And that's not true. We are seeing DES daughters in their 40s who are developing this cancer. So it's denial all over the place. The medical profession does not like to look at its mistakes. You're not about to let them get away with that, though. <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> Thanks to Pat Cody, the US Congress is pumping millions of dollars into research projects. One is just now revealing possible effects on the third generation, the grandchildren of those who took the drug. Another is focusing on DES sons because it affects them as well. DES sons have risks for a low sperm count and for testicular cancer. 
DES mothers have a 30% higher risk for breast cancer than mothers who did not take DES. And there are a lot of other areas of and body systems that I believe are affected that we haven't yet been able to get research on. I've sort of since been able to attribute... In Australia, though, as Lisa will tell you, most doctors simply don't know about DES um, do or about the damage it's no, done. I've, I'm actually going seeing fertility specialists at the moment and the ones that I've seen, I give them the information and they just sort of dismiss it. They say, oh, OK, and put it in their file. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's incredibly frustrating and you feel quite helpless when these people who you respect as professionals don't seem to want to know about it. I, I wrote to each and every doctor I could who delivered the particular women who were sent to me and with one exception they all denied that they'd actually given the drug. And Wh wh Why was that do you think? I think they're just scared, they were scared of being sued even back then. Oh, did your mother have trouble having you, Nerida? Obstetrician and gynaecologist Jules Black is one Australian doctor who does know. He's been seeing DES patients for 20 years and battling colleagues loath to admit they ever prescribed it. A huge wall of resistance I have found at uh, federal government level, even my own Royal College level. They're not accepting their responsibility towards our patients. I think we really owe it to them. Even getting patient records is very difficult at times. Very hard. We are legally obliged to keep our files for seven years uh, if a pregnancy is involved 25 years. Now you could imagine if something will come back and uh, haunt a doctor years later, uh, they will not shed a tear if these files suddenly uh, fall off the, the edge of the earth. The DES daughters have asked our Federal Health Minister Michael Waldridge, himself a doctor, to establish a register of their names. He's refused. In this letter saying there'd be little benefit and that a general publicity campaign for DES exposed people to identify themselves would create community anxiety without tangible benefit. Oh, the, some of the doctors are the worst. And he's our health minister. I know, I understand, I understand. Oh yeah, we've, we've had situations. The only person in Congress who voted against our bill was a doctor <laughs> who said, oh well that was a long time ago, people are getting adequate care, doctors are informed, and um, you're just going to alarm a lot of people needlessly. I'm really worried about what is going to happen to me in the future and some of the things that have happened to me in the last, you know, 10 years. It seems ludicrous now, but Janet Cregan Wood was one of hundreds of girls around Australia recruited for a wacky experiment involving DES. They were given it to see if it could stop them from growing unsociably tall. Um, we don't have many family photographs of me at this time because uh, I think my mother told me a few years ago she'd burnt them all. Is that right? I have very distinct memories of this. It was very, very unpleasant um, because it involved being x-rayed, it involved having calipers um, pinch our skin, our nipples, every, you know, all over us. And uh, we had photographs taken of us in all sorts of anatomical positions. At 11, Janet was 5 foot 7, 167 centimetres. Doctors at a Melbourne university predicted that she'd grow to what was then considered a freakish 176 centimetres, or 5 foot 10. So her mother Peg agreed to put her on the program. None of us were ever told that it was a trial in any way. What were you told? We were. T I was told that it would, if if Janet was going to grow over a certain age, that it really was advisable to have it done to make her more acceptable. The treatment was a disaster. True, Janet grew by only half of what was predicted, but during the year she took the drug, her body ballooned. She developed depression and now suffers the same symptoms as DES daughters. I did have three consecutive miscarriages and I have had a ruptured ovarian cyst. Now, you know, any woman can experience these things. I think the interesting thing is that given the opportunity now of meeting and speaking to over 135 women in Australia and some now in America, is that what I have experienced is just resonated with so many other women and um, you know is what has happened to us related back to being exposed to this 
hormone. And uh, the trouble is no one's ever been able to say no. While the FDA are listening to American women, the Australian authorities don't seem to be listening to Australian women. Hello. <laughs> yes. That is the reality. Mm. Um, it's always been known in the medical profession that our drug authorities here lag years behind sometimes any drug innovation that occurs overseas. Now some people are going to say, well that's a good thing because DES is an example of that. We take longer to uh, evaluate a drug in case something else uh, happens, but uh, uh, I think that's a, a paltry excuse in, in this case. There's no doubt that DES was a massive medical mistake. One made in good faith, no doubt, but the cover-up that's followed, especially here in Australia, has only compounded the devastation for the tens of thousands involved. Should there be a registry? I really believe there should be. Uh, after all, uh, this is a thing that happened. We can't help that, but it's a fact. These women are reaching age groups and we don't know what lies ahead in, in the menopause or in their late years. And after all, it occurred to me that uh, our major car manufacturers, they have all their customers registered and if a defect is noticed in the suspension or the steering, they send a letter out to all the owners of that particular model and the defect is checked. And this is a very established principle in our society. And, and we talk about machines but we can't organise the same thing for human life, which strikes me as an anomaly. Keeping up with the research is not that hard. Keep up with the research and educate the physicians and put it on all the patient intake forms. Do you know if, you're, uh, if your mother took hormones when she was pregnant with you? Do a public education camp. They owe it to the public to do this.